Here's another thing that you've got to understand when you have high technique. It's a completely different feeling than most people think they're going to have when they have high technique. Most people, they when, when you say, okay, you will have this ability to move people effortlessly, what most people think is, oh, what I'm going to feel is this power coming from my Dantian, right? And it's going to come out and it's going to erupt and like, move the person. No, that's not what it feels like at all. It feels like all the power is in your fingertip, that you don't have any connection with the Dantian in that sense. What people are really feeling when they talk about power from the Dantian is they're talking about moving their own body and then using the movement of their own body to shove the other person. So in other words, you're like making you and the other person into one object and then you're moving that united object. That's what it feels like when you move your center and the person moves. But that's not the high skill. The high skill is when it feels like you're kind of like a soap bubble and all of the all of the power is in the surface tension of the bubble. And that's a beautiful feeling because you feel empty inside. You feel completely effortless inside. And you feel like the power is jumping directly from your fingertips into the other person. That's why it says manifested in the fingers. It is really gorgeous. And the, it's terrible. It's a problem that people, you know, they don't understand that's what they want to. They don't understand that that's the high feeling. So they're working for this feeling in the Dantian. They go like, I want to feel this, you know, power in my Dantian. No, no, no. When you have the high technique, you don't feel any power in your Dantian. You feel all the power on the surface, on this, on this like, like I say, this surface tension almost. You know, when you press a bubble, you know, the center of the bubble is not even, there's nothing there. It's just empty, right? It's the surface tension. Of, and that's a ball. You know, it's the surface tension of the outside of the ball that's actually, you know, where the power is. And that's what happens when you do this correctly. You, the power is on the outside and you feel it there. And the minute you actually experience this, it is just a remarkable feeling. Doing Tai Chi correctly is not the feeling of being powerful. That's why I'm saying the feeling of being powerful is feeling power in your center. And that's why I say people think, oh, I'm going to like feel this power coming out of me. No, you don't feel this thing of like being able to flick people away with your hands. Like I've been talking about the powers on the surface. That doesn't feel powerful. You feel like you don't need any power. If it's, <laughs> there's no power there, it doesn't matter. You just kind of go like this and they fall over. Uh, so it's not a feeling of power. Tai Chi does not give you security. It doesn't give you power. You know, it gives you this weird thing where you feel like you're kind of like walking on the edge of a, you know, a tightrope or something. And you just, you know, keep compensating and you don't fall off. It's like being in the stealth bomber. You do not feel stable. Your, all your stability is being manufactured by change. And all the change means you are reacting from second to second and with the change of the, of the opponent. If the opponent just did something completely stupid and straightforward, you know, if that was what fighting was, you wouldn't need this. But when people fight, they do all kinds of stuff. They're totally unpredictable. Their force is unpredictable. Their direction is unpredictable. The timing is unpredictable. You have to have this thing where you're going to say, oh, whatever it is, I'm going to just follow it. That is not a feeling of power. That's a feeling of insecurity. Power means you feel like you don't have to follow it. Then they try to do something that doesn't work. No, everything they do works <laughs> in the sense that it, uh, it does what they think. It's what, you know, they're not feeling any resistance. When you don't feel resistance, you say, well, what I'm doing works. So you're letting everything they do work, and yet you're telling them, but you're going to regret doing it. That's the whole thing of being discharged. It makes you jump. So you think, wow, I've really done this wonderfully powerful thing. I've made him jump. Well, he makes you jump and you end up in the advantageous position. So he goes, I made him jump, but it was a mistake because he jumped. So that's why I say when you practice discharge, you have four different possibilities. One of you is double weighted or the other one's double weighted. That's two different possibilities because it could be one or the other. You're both double weighted or neither of you are double weighted. Those are the possibilities. And you get four different results when you do that. The classical, what I call the classical discharge, is defined as one of the, the person doing the push is supposed to be some kind of master. So he's not double weighted. And the person receiving the force is double weighted. And then you get this result where the person leaves the ground both feet at the time. Why does he leave the ground with both feet at the time? Because he's creating a balance between the feet. 
He's the one that's distributing the force equally to both feet. So of course they both leave the ground at the same time. That's how he jumps, right? But that's why his movement is not a clever step. When you have a clever step, the feet don't leave the ground at the same time. They move like a step. They move like when you're actually stepping. One leg moves first and the other follows. That's why, you know, we have these moves in Sancho. You know, like, for instance, the move before the double box ears, right? You know, you don't like jump backwards and then jump forwards with both feet and box the ears. No, you take like a step, like a super light to boom, 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 and you come in, that's how they box the ears. That's showing skill, okay? Now, so in the classical discharge, you're, you're assuming that the, you have this relationship, and then you get this kind of classical finish, which actually is very boring because it stops everything. It's over. And you can say, okay, I've now, it's interesting because if the person doing the discharge is, you know, it's actually high technique, it means as you are being double-weightedly discharged, he can follow you. He finds it easy to follow you. And he follows you perfectly with timing. It doesn't, in fact, it's worse if he, if he goes faster. It's not that you want to, like, get there as fast as you can. No, you want to follow it with exactly the same rhythm that the person is being discharged. And when you do, you end up exactly in position so that when he tries something else, you can do it again. In other words, you always end up, this is what produces the perfect timing, okay? But usually, you know, you wouldn't see that because, okay, in the classical discharge, he doesn't follow you. He just stands in one place. You fly away. So you have this classical thing. One person flies away in this, like, fixed position, and the other person doesn't move at all in his fixed position. It's not really a high technique, right? Because, you know, like I say, it doesn't really matter. The skill is in the person being discharged, and now he's just being double-weighted. Okay, let me not confuse things. But now suppose we reverse this. Now the person doing the discharge is double-weighted, which is usually what happens. And now let's assume the person who is being discharged is not double-weighted. Now what will happen is the same thing will happen in the sense of what people see, if they're in one of these tournaments, they'll still say, oh, the guy won because you moved your feet and he didn't move his. But the point is not who moved their feet. The point is who is advantageous at the end of the situation. So if I'm not, you know, I won't be flying away from you and separate the distance. I'll turn this into a step and it'll be super lively step. It'll be so lively that my feet will both leave the ground. But when I land, you'll be double weighted and I won't be. And I'll have the advantage, right? So in other words, it doesn't matter who whose feet leave the ground and whose don't. It matters who is double-weighted. <laughs> and so again, if the pusher is double-weighted and the receiver is not double-weighted, he's going to land with the advantage. If it's reversed, technically the pusher would have the advantage. But the usual situation is they're both double-weighted. You know, and that's perfectly possible to happen. That's what almost always happens when people are playing around in class and stuff like that. Like I say, the, the guy pushing just instinctively gives himself a double-weighted position, so it's real strong. And then, you know, the other person resists with a double-weighted position. So they separate. The thing is over, and they have to come back together again. So it's the, it's opposite of, now what, it's the opposite of long boxing, okay, continuous boxing. Now, what's the fourth possibility? Is that neither one is double-weighted. And when they present this kind of stuff in writing, they almost... It's almost like they make the assumption that that's impossible, that the situation is always that one person is, is doing high technique, the other person's not. No, they can both have high technique. And that's a real realization. That's when you get continuous boxing. That's what you want. You don't want one person to be right and the other person to be wrong. You want them both to be right. And then nobody wins, but nobody loses. You just keep going. And that's how you learn. I mean, that means you can like, you know, when you can just keep going and all the, and that's when the techniques just evolve. And that's when you have the concept of the eight trigram postures because they keep changing into different techniques. Uh, and as they do, you learn how to apply them. 